Hello and welcome back. So in this episode I want to cover something called material sets and I'm going to show you how to edit the properties of the different materials. So I'm going to open up the Surforge window, dock it on the left side, take my hierarchy, drop it over here, project over here, and delete the console window. And just so I can see them both, I'm going to take the hierarchy and drop it here like that. And in Surforge I'm going to click on new texture. It's loading. Alright, so now I can click on this Y gizmo, go into top down view, and uh, the poly lasso tool is primarily what I'm going to use for creating geometry. So now I'm going to double click in this space to fill it up, and then I'm just going to hold shift and click to start um, creating different pieces. I don't want, uh, I want 10 different pieces here. So let's see how many this is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. So now I'm just going to go down the keyboard. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Wow, apparently my counting skills have atrophied since middle school. Um, that is not enough shapes. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and uh, one more down here. Now I'm going to hit space to render, and now you can see uh, we just assigned a bunch of different materials to this object, and the materials that we chose are being pulled from the steel and blue paint material set. We have all of these different material sets, and so each one um, basically gives you a consistent color scheme. My favorite is yellow painted metal stripes. I like this texture a lot. Um, but essentially, uh, we've got eight materials and two different emission properties. Those are zero and nine. Now, if I want to shuffle this color scheme, I can click on this, and what what this is going to do it's is just shuffle the materials within the set. If I click on this one, it's going to um, randomly pull materials from all the different sets. So um, in my previous videos, I was using this one, but I guess it actually makes more sense to use this one because because it, it'll keep a consistent color scheme. Now let's look at um, editing the individual materials. So let's say I want to edit edit this black uh, black and yellow one. I'm just going to highlight, I'm going to hover the mouse over it and hit control. And that's going to select the material that's at that space, which is material 4. Now we have the first slot is texture, and that's going to be used for albedo, specular, and glossiness. Essentially, if I select that, um, let's make this bigger. Uh, you can see th this is the image that's being used for uh, this, this field here. And the bright spots on the image are going to be the, the more specular and more glossy spots on the material. Uh, these are used for tiling the material. And uh, there should be sliders here. We can't see them because I made it too small. So if I, if I drag this open further, uh, now we can see the sliders. And so uh, we're, we're editing this material. If I want to make it more specular, I can drag this up. And uh, you, you can't see the changes because um, these two paint slots are actually overriding it. So I'm, I'm going to instead choose this texture, this material. So I highlight that, hit control. Um, now, now I'm going to start messing with specularity. And specularity, I think this one... Uh, this one is also being overridden by the paint textures, so I'm just going to bring down paint intensity. Um, so, so that's essentially canceling out what this is doing. Now we can see uh, specularity. Essentially, specularity is the mirror mirror likeness of your model. So with no specularity, it just kind of looks like a piece of metal. If you turn specularity up, it, the the bright spots on the image are becoming 
much more like a mirror in real life, like we're seeing the skybox reflected off it. Um, so detail shift is sort of like the, the noise being applied there. And contrast changes the sharpness of the edges. Now glossiness is a similar thing to specularity. Um, essentially it's like the the uh, smoothness of the shape. So if, if these are both all the way up, it's completely mirror-like. Um, if specularity is down and glossiness is up, it's it's sort of like a waxy mirrorness. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job describing that, um, but but these two essentially control how much how much light is being reflected off and what color the reflection should be. So right, like like if we change this now, now we're reflecting like a much more orange light. Um, so now we have paint intensity one, paint in intensity two, and that's going to con control these two um, blocks. And I'll, I'll cover those later, um, but but we can control the amount of these using these two sliders. The next thing we have is one edges. And now the one edges, it's not um, necessarily talking about the edges of your model. It's talking about the edges of the shape that you're projecting onto the model. That's an important distinction because if I take this shape that we're editing, which is this one, if I drag that up a little bit and then render it, uh, if I use one edges, we're going to see those here and here, but we're not going to see them on the top because uh, the the top of this edge is actually outside the range of the camera. So for example, I can bring up worn edges and now you can see it's sort of like sanding down the sides of the model. Um, but it's not doing it up here because it's it's out of the screen. So I can now I can just pull this back down. Set that to zero here and hit render. And it's it's not doing exactly what I want it to. Uh, maybe I maybe I can try on this one. So let's select this piece. Render. Right. So now it has almost no no worn edges. Um, I'm going to select this with Control and bring up the worn edges on this piece. Well, that one doesn't seem to be doing anything either. Why don't, why don't we try shrinking this? Render. That, that's looking better. So now, now we, we can actually see the effect of the worn edges. Oh, and I, th I think that's actually the problem. Uh, th the reason this one isn't having much worn edges, well, let's select that again. Um, th the reason the edges weren't like wearing down in the way that I expected is because of the noise here. So I'm going to set all these to like 0.2. There we go. So now you can see as we bring up the horn edges, it's actually like sanding down uh, the different um, corners of the model. Right. And if we change opacity, that's uh, essentially the transparency of the worn edges. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is these two paint sections, and for that I'm going to choose this material. So I'm just hovering over it, hitting control, and now we have material 4 selected. So the pattern here is determined by these two things. The yellow is given by the first block, so th there's no paint mask so essentially we're applying the yellow to the entire model and then we're going to paint over that with the blackness um, but we're using this paint mask and I, at first I looked at this and I was like well that's weird it seems like uh, it seems like the mask should have this pattern right like if, if we're using this mask to determine where the black goes the pattern should be in the mask well the reason we can't see it is because there's white color 
with an alpha background and when unity opens that it just shows everything is white so if we click here now the alpha is rendering as uh, white and the color is or the, the the color the actual white color is is being shown as white and then the completely completely transparent sections are being shown as black uh, so the the whiteness here corresponds to the black paint here and if we want to we can change the scaling of that so we could just do like 0.2 and 0.2 um, and that's important because if, if the camera is really far away you want the texture to be um, less less tiled you want, you want it to tile less often so right now we're tiling uh, we're essentially taking one-fifth of this image and mapping it to the whole space we could do like a one-to-one -one tiling or we could do um, two of these images per square um, and, and the closer the closer you are the more detail you should show so it makes sense to tile more often for it for like closer up things sorry if I'm rambling so, so now we can change the noise for that texture and that's essentially the um, the worn downness of the texture and we can do the same thing above like this so essentially we're like stripping away the yellow paint pretty cool stuff uh, the next thing I want to show you guys is the dirt category so, th so this is being applied to all 10 materials and we can just drag this up and make the whole thing look really dirty contrast makes the, the edges of the dirt look sharper and opacity is like the the opaqueness or like the solidness of the color so I'm just gonna make this like a murky brown color let's get it really grungy now for this one it's it's the same thing um, it's just a it's it's just more of the same thing so like we can change noise color opacity right and now we have a mission and so that's gonna be this and this and so we can change the intensity and that's gonna bleed into other colors and we can change intensity of the second one as well as the color and the very last thing is this adjustment tab and so this is gonna let us set min and max for all of these different fields across all of the textures so specularity that's like how much that's how similar each texture is to a mirror so if I want if I want uh, if I want them all to be at least half mirror -y, I can bring this up to like 0.5 or I could cap them out at a certain amount of reflectivity by bringing down the max and same thing with glossiness so now we have no reflectivity at all or we can make make it completely reflective and now you can see exactly the skybox is being reflected Uh, you don't want to make it too reflective though um, because essentially it's going to reflect your skybox but unless you use um, more complicated lighting setups it's probably not going to reflect everything else in your scene I don't know that for sure um, but usually reflections um, f built into shaders uh, don't reflect everything they, just re they only reflect certain things so you don't want to make it completely reflective because um, because it's not it's not actually going to perfectly reflect objects in the scene uh, the next thing is gamma I don't know what this does um, you can play with it it looks cool uh, I just I can't really speak to that um, then we have min input max input I don't know what these do either but they look really cool Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what's happening there. Uh, then we have hue. So this is like the color. So you're just like running running across the colors in the rainbow. And saturation is the amount of color. So like uh, if you turn saturation all the way up to one, you're going to have really yellow yellows, really brown browns, right? 
or or if the other way you're sort of washing out the colors and so things that are yellow are now much less yellow uh, that the brown stuck around because that's the specularity which is which is uh, controlled differently and then uh, we also have brightness and contrast these are pretty obvious um, bright dark somewhere in the middle and contrast changes the sharpness of the edges and global texture scale this changes the um, this is going to modify the scale of this texture in the first slot it's not modifying the textures in this slot um, which is fine right so we're we're moving the the noise textures I mean it's not it's not noise it's it's an actual texture but we're, we're just rescaling that and now if we want to rescale the black and blue that would be uh, control to select the material and you can scale these down here I guess th my last thing to say is that um, we we pretty heavily modified our yellow painted mat metal stripes material set um, but luckily that's not a permanent change if I click on new scene and create a new texture the uh, yellow painted material set is still the same right so if I choose material 4 render that's still black and yellow not um, the blue and black that we ended up with before uh, so if you want to save your material sets you can do that uh, here yeah save material set that is an option um, so do that if you need to uh, honestly I, I, I'm happy that 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 these don't get changed automatically because I would have destroyed them right away uh, I'm going to cut this video off here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.